This is an HF scale laser cut kit from Banta Models. This is Creek Hollow hardware. Let's see what's in the box. Here we have instructions with some pictures of their finished model. I know that with laser cut kits, it's a good idea to read all of the instructions before you begin assembly. So I will do that and we will come back with the next step. The assembly up to now is pretty straightforward, but I think I've gone as far as I can go before I have to start thinking about painting. And I would like to do some painting of the wood paneling before I add it to the kit. So I need to find these pieces, the external pieces, the siding pieces, and where they go so I can decide what color they're going to get. These are actually wood, and in the instructions he recommends that you use enamel paint to prevent warping. Uh, the Bar Mills people recommend that you spray enamel over the wood before you do any acrylic painting to help prevent warping. I'm going to try that technique because I just don't have very many enamel paints. I'm on step five, which they call the pump house, which is the little side building here. These are the walls for it, and it has clapboard siding, which is this paper. And what they recommend is that you spray these walls with uh, adhesive glue and then attach the paper siding. An important point is that there's these vertical lines. Those are the endpoints of the siding, so you don't want the siding to go past these vertical lines and then you use the horizontal lines as the spacers for the siding. So I'm going to go and spray some glue on these and we'll be back to attach the siding. I've sprayed this piece of wall with uh, spray adhesive and I want to make sure that I have the uh, top and bottom correct. So this piece goes here, so this is the side that goes against the wall. So I take the pieces of strip and I line them up against the lines and press them in. I'm trying to make some effort to not have the shingles line up exactly. It looks like I'm supposed to go all the way to the very top, covering over the notches. And I let that set. And then when you're doing it with the window, once it is set, you flip it over and cut out the window and cut out around the notches.
finished painting the pump house and I got the walls attached. Now I'm going to attach the roof. Here's my painted clapboard siding. I'm not real happy with the way it turned out, but there's a little bit more to do. So I'm gonna attach it and see, how, see what I can do with it. To me, it kind of looks like it has the measles. I really wanted very little red on the walls at all. So it's kind of a snug fit with the siding. This, this end kind of juts out, but it does fit in there. It's one of those things where uh, I knew that was going to break off. Uh, one of those things where it always looks better on the building than it does as a piece, so it's kind of hard to tell how good it's going to be. This is where I am so far. I have the siding applied, uh, the clapboard siding is applied to all the walls. I have the deck installed. Uh, the office is built with the shingled siding. And I'm at step 17 where I'm starting to apply what they call one by eights, which is this strip wood to the, uh, the side of the office. So I'm attaching the one by eights to the siding here. And with strip wood, one of the things you want to do is you want to use uh, some 4 out steel wool and, and run it over a couple times to get rid of any of the little splinters that stick out because they become very noticeable when you paint them and uh, when you look at them up close. So it really makes a difference in the appearance uh, to do that. So the instructions for this siding say to line everything up with the doors and windows and sort of use these vertical lines as a guide. So I'm cutting some strips and lining things up and trying to get it on there as best I can. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to remove these extra pieces, but I'm going to do it somehow. I got all the siding on the office and I think it's mostly dried and I found that if I use a uh, really sharp knife I can just kind of whittle off the excess. The next step is to add some windows and doors on the pump house and the office and so obviously I think I'm going to need to paint the office first. So let me think about some colors and we'll get started on that. I painted the office walls with this uh, craft store dark brown and for some reason it kind of went on transparent and I really liked uh, the look of it so I think that looks pretty good. It still needs a lot of weathering. I'm still not happy with the pump house and I think that I need more depth of color, more variety of color so what I'm going to try and do is a, a dry brush. I have this brown sand color.
I think that improved it. The next step is going to be weathering powders and then spray with dull coat and then we'll come back and add the windows. This is how it looks after I applied some weathering powders and sprayed it with some testers dull coat. Uh, I got a lot of black on there. It almost looks like it was kind of burned out, but that was a little bit of the look I was going for. I might have overdone it a little bit, but we'll see what happens next. I'm in the process of working on the windows and doors. For the windows, most of the frames are two pieces with a frame and a windowsill. So I have those glued together. Then they have what's called the million. I've never heard that word before, but these are the window, the inner parts of the window, and then the glazing. So these have a sticky backing that you peel off. Then you just press it onto the glazing. And then remove the backing paper. And the backing paper is kind of stuck on around the edges because I think the laser burned it on. So I'm getting my windows organized. So we have two of these horizontal sliding windows, which are the six pane. We have two of the vertical sliding windows, which are the nine pane. We have three of the square windows, which are six pane, and then we have the two round ones. So the horizontal go front of the office and side of the office. The vertical goes side of the building, the back of the building, and then the square goes pump house there. and the office. That was there. This gets shutters. At this point, I got all the doors on and all the windows except for what goes on the metal shed. Um, I gotta say, it was pretty difficult, I thought, to get the windows on. It, it wasn't, wasn't that easy. And for these doors, if you're gonna have them closed, what you really should do is put some bracing in against the wall so that you have something to press them up for. So on the front door, I decided to have one open and one closed. So even for this door, I, I could have put in some bracing, it would have made it easier. And then the other thing to keep in mind is actually there's a left and a right door. So I decided to make mine so that the diagonal points down towards the center. Also, I think I jumped ahead. I think I put these doors in earlier than I was supposed to. I, I think in the instructions he was having these doors go in after you put in the roof. But I think it's a lot easier to do it before you put the roof in because you can put your finger in there to, to brace it. So hopefully I made the right decision and we'll see how that turns out. This is a picture of a barn I took some years ago and I was using it as inspiration for how I wanted to finish the office walls. And you'll notice that the walls really have almost no color left in them. They're just black, white and shades of gray. And so that's what I did with the office walls. And, and we saw it previously that it was very much black, but it needed some white added to it. So I gave it a very thin wash of this white, uh, actually ivory color. And I used a wash of isopropyl alcohol instead of water, and that made it spread a little bit better. 
One thing to keep in mind is isopropyl alcohol will remove acrylic paint, uh, which may be a good thing or a bad thing depending on what you're trying to do. Um, in some cases, it came on kind of splotchy. Like I also did the wash on the pump house. Um, and in order to tone that down, I then used a uh, this Vallejo model wash. This is a, a gray color, just a gray wash. And that got rid of some of the boldness of the white. So this is the end result there and there's probably even more stuff to come after that but I'm going to wait until uh, I, I complete more of the assembly. Here is my metal siding. I spray painted it with uh, testers graphite metallic gray and then I covered it with some weathering powders although I'm not sure that the weathering powders did too much because I don't think they stick very well to that paint, particular paint color. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a sponge and I'm going to dab on Tamiya Hall Red, which is a really nice rust color that I use a lot. I actually use it frequently for my rails on the layout. So one of the reasons I cut the sheet before I painted it was I know there's going to be some shiny edges if I were to cut it otherwise and I wanted to, to minimize that as much as possible. I'm still going to have to make some lengths cuts but it's not going to be as bad. My next technique for the rust is going to be this uh, Vallejo rust texture. I didn't really like how that rust texture went on, so I'm going to try this AK Interactive Rust Deposits. This is an enamel product. The next thing I did was I covered these with some weathering powders and then sprayed with Tester's Dull Coat. And that's all I'm going to do until I attach these to the building, so that's the next step. I've started applying the siding to the shed, and it didn't take me long to realize that I should paint the walls black. And that way if there's any gaps in the siding, they won't be very visible. Uh, to glue the siding, I started out using epoxy. I didn't really like that, so I'm using the Gorilla Glue uh, Super Glue Gel, and that seems to be working pretty well, so I'm kind of happy with that. This is the shed with the siding applied and I just use these nippers to trim along the top to get the right angle for the roof. I gotta say that using metal for the corrugated sheet metal is pretty difficult to deal with. I know some companies use paper for corrugated metal uh, and that is much easier to work with. I've used some of that in the past and I think in the future if any kit comes with metal for the actual sheet metal siding I'm going to just toss it and I'm going to go with paper. I'm finishing up the roof trim. So I've attached these around the edges and I'm going to trim them off to length just with nippers like that. Getting the roof on was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, in here it didn't exactly fit. kind of had to cut away uh, at the sides and bring that in. This is the roofing material. And I think that the first thing that gets roofed is the pump house. Also, I think it's going to make sense to put the roofing material on the shed and office roof before I actually attach those roofs. So let's try and roof the pump house.
So you're supposed to use spray adhesive to mount the, mount the roof paper. I'm not really sure which side I sprayed. I guess I got it right. I got the tar paper onto the roof and I glued it on just using white glue. And it wasn't really difficult to cut it to fit. So all I'm going to do now is just paint it. And I'm just using a black acrylic paint. This is where we are with the kit. I've attached uh, all of the doors. Uh, everything needs uh, some touch-up painting. There's a stove pipe that goes in this hole, which is in the progress of being painted. Um, as of now, I've only painted the roof black, and I'm going to try and give it some color. So I have this brown wash, and we're going to start with that and see what happens. Yeah, I don't exactly know. Like, I, I never really have a much of a plan. There's a lot of just uh, experimenting and seeing what I get. Banta kits, uh, their specialty seems to be period pieces, you know, like 30s or 40s. And they seem to be easier to build if you're going to build them as they would have looked brand new. It, uh, this would have been a pretty easy kit to build, I think, if you assembled most of it first and then did all the painting. But since I was doing the sponge technique, I really had to paint the walls before I put the whole kit together. And I think that made it a little more difficult. Another point about this roof and the office roof, in the instructions he recommended that you go a little bit over on this edge, make it a little bit too long, and that way you can have it fold up. That would have been a nice detail. I, I wish I would have read that. Another detail I like to add is this AK Interactive Slimy Grime Dark. It's kind of a green color. So just add it around the, the bottom of the kit. talking about the Henry Swain Club. I saw that drop in there that night. And when I got there, I said, yes, people. Yes, they were really having a ball. Yes, I know. <laughs> 